Is yoga from Sweden? I'm so happy somebody asked that question so we can talk a little bit about it because maybe more students heard this kind of story. Let me explain. Um, no, uh, all yoga is from India. All yoga is based in ancient sacred knowledge called the Vedas. Um, and is yoga from Sweden is not even the right question. The idea was sort of popularized about, I think, 10 years ago when a man called Mark Singleton wrote a book about the origin of asana practice. And he writes in this book that he found a book about Scandinavian exercises from the like 20s called Primitive Gymnastics. And he's like, wait, that's pretty much every standing posture I do in my yoga classes. So he's like, hmm, that's kind of odd. Now, yoga traditionally is an oral tradition where you're working with your guru. There's a very clear lineage and line. Um, and yet, the further you go back, the less is there about asana practice. Because remember, yoga traditionally was about meditation, about understanding yourself better, about realizing God or be in union with God. So very spiritual base. And these meditations seem very, very hard for people because, you know, your knee hurts and your back hurts and blah. So it was a group of people that put the focus on asana practice, learn to control the body and therefore learn to control the mind, which could take very odd, weird little <laughs> ways and avenues. Like there are people that swore to, for the rest of their life, stand only on one leg or to sit in the tree or never to lower their arm again. And the arm is literally withering away. These vows of complete commitment to control the body are, even in the scriptures, described as crazy. Like if you read the Bhagavad Gita, this is not what it's asked. This is not the way to do it. We are not here to dominate our own body. That's not the idea. But so there's a strong asana based practice. But there are only so and so many ways of moving the body, isn't there? So why is there the idea that that was only developed in India? Why wouldn't we have come up with things that look pretty much the same in the West? Of course we did. So this point at the beginning of last century, around the 20s, when Krishna Marcharya was teaching yoga, maybe there were influences, or maybe it was just simply the same. Does it really matter? Remember that it's not about asana practice. This man called Krishna Marcharya, which you should know more about because he's a very interesting man, his yoga was really based on your individual well-being. So every student would have a very specific way of practicing. That was not groups classes for 20 people. He worked with one person after the other. And Krishnamacharya was raised in a family where he started to study the Sanskrit and the Vedas at a very early age. He spent years living with his guru. Um, he learned and studied Ayurveda. So he had this vast knowledge of how to help people to feel better. So if there are elements coming in that might be helpful for this or that student that is wonderful. Yoga has to be an individual practice. This idea that we can teach 20, 30 people in one class and everybody gets the same benefits out of it is just silly. So if your idea was, ooh, asana practice is thousands of years old, no, that's not true. But yoga, what yoga is really about is thousands of years old. Again, there is a text uh, from a yoga teacher called Eddie Stern, and you should really read, I think it's on Facebook. He commented sort of on this book, and he has a wonderful little way of arguing, um, and he read many more important scriptures than me, so he can refer um, and answer to this book in a different way, but I think a, I don't think it's really true. And if it is true, it doesn't really matter because, again, asana practice is a tool 
to get to the real journey of yoga. You know what I mean? So um, Mark Singleton, Eddie Stern's answer. These are good things to Google up if you want to learn a little bit more. But no, yoga ain't from Sweden. Does that help? Okay. Ciao.